the hydrogen uh, technologies and fuel cell technologies are clearly ready for the market, not only for transport but also for energy applications. The transition has to come progressively. It's not a full uh, revolution, I will say. We have to implement progressively the different uh, types of applications. The fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking is mainly based on small and medium enterprises. So that means that we have not really lobbies uh, that are participating in the system. Of course, we try to build a very homogeneous uh, fuel cells and hydrogen community that is going in the same direction and this will be in itself a lobby. Ah, the, the member states can always do more, that's for sure, but we are, uh, as a fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking, an executive agency. So we apply what the different member states want us to do. And so it's clear that if you look at the budget of the fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking, we have a budget of about 2.2 billion euro for 14 years. As I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, uh, the budget that the European uh, Union members are spending for buying fuels is one billion per day. So you can always do more. That's not a problem. We have to, to start uh, immediately because the technology is ready. We really need to implement, to deploy the technology in the different member states and the different regions. I'm always talking about the carrot and the hammer. The carrot is incentive. If you provide some incentive for electric vehicles, you need, of course, to provide the same kind of incentives for other technologies that are competing, like, for example, fuel cell electric vehicle. The other way is the hammer. It's to say, for example, the legislation. You can, you can reduce, in case of transport, the, the amount of CO2 emissions or greenhouse gas emissions and progressively you will select the different technologies that are emission-free, like fuel cells, electric vehicles. It's also a question of culture. I think that uh, the young people are more and more uh, attracted by the protection of climate, the protection of the environment. They understand that we are just here as uh, working on earth and we will give the earth to our children, grandchildren and so on. So we need to protect this earth and protect the environment. Having and developing technologies that are uh, environment free or good for the environment is clearly something that young people would like to develop, I think.